Nice. There you go. Now it's on. Welcome back to Friday Night Flies. Your host, Brad Knowles, a.k.a. The Fish Finder. We do a lot of fishing up here in the Pacific Northwest. We all have big dreams of catching that big chum salmon, coho salmon, pink salmon, Chinook salmon. Did I say Chinook already? Coho nope. salmon, the big five. And then we also chase steelhead throughout the winter and spring months. But this little pattern, I just happened to stumble onto while we were refining a few different patterns for chum salmon and coho salmon. And it works pretty good. We called it the SSG bucktail, also known as the triple odd buck. The reason we called this pattern what we did for the similarities to a shotgun shell. Once you throw this fly at the water, it seems to hit everything. I like a cat? Yeah, it just seems to hit everything. Not to brag or anything, but uh, you're definitely going to want to try to tie this pattern. Anyhow, let's go down, go down to the fly. We'll show people what we got here. All right. The masterpiece. Well, at least I think it is. It's, it worked pretty darn good for me the other day, didn't it, Scott? That it did. And there was enough people coming up to me asking me what we were using, so I think we're on to something. And I think you should definitely try this pattern. Anyhow, it's got a pretty long list of materials, which is also below the video. Like, if you're watching the video, you go down to the, to the description and wait, wait, way down at the bottom, there's a material list. I'll try and remember to talk about it as we're going. But uh, there's quite a bit of stuff here to tie, so I'm going to get at her. That's what it looks like. We'll give it a quick rotate on the rotational vise. I tied on a pretty big hook because most of the salmon in the Pacific Northwest here are big. And it also adds a little bit of strength and uh, weight to the fly as well. I'm not too familiar with your vise here, and it just doesn't want to let go of it. Yeah, I know. It's on the last <laughs> legs of its, of its life. Let go. Let go. I do the back. I already did that a little bit. Okay, so anyhow. We're going to start off with a Mustad 3 up It's broad hook. Hopefully you can read that from there. You probably won't find those hooks too many places other than Spud Valley Sporting Goods in downtown Pemberton. Hence the plug. If you haven't shopped here, you must shop here. We're going to lock this down. Hopefully it doesn't move around too much. We're going to start off with... Our ultra thread, 140 in uh, fluorescent orange. I'm just going to lock it down. Hopefully, it doesn't look too blurry because I'm wrapping like at the speed lightning. of light. Cut the back end off here. I'm just going to work my way back. And when you're working with these big hooks, they can take a little bit of thread. But I'm going to make a little bit of a hot spot here at the very back end of the hook with the fluorescent orange. Because we'll show you here at the end what it looks like under a UV light, which is important. We like the hot spots here. Then we're going to take, as you're going to notice if you watch our videos a lot, that I love UV patterns. This here is a large polar chenille in UV in chartreuse. Lock it down. And all I'm going to do is just give it a couple wraps just to bring it into it. And you want to pull it back so you're not wrapping over it and trapping all that stuff. I'm not going to put a lot of this on there. It's just one of those highlighted areas. Just a little bit like so. Lock it down. Hopefully I'm not going too fast here and I'm being as descriptive as I can. Like I said, there's quite a few patterns here, materials that I gotta get into this or incorporate into this pattern. So I just go back over it a little bit just to, just to get it to lay flat. You see how it throws it back a little bit. 
And then a similar stuff, the UV chenille, the polar chenille in silver. This stuff is awesome when you hit it with the UV light. And as I'm sure you're all aware, that fish see in UV, it only makes sense to use UV. It's not your traditional stuff, but I'm far from your traditional kind of guy. So I'm just going to wrap a couple shots of that just to give it a little bit of life. A little bit of party. It's kind of like the 1090. Business up front, party in the back. So we throw that guy on there. Lock it down. Lock it down. <laughs> well, you're locking that down. We'll also let people know that while you're watching live, Did I just cut my and while you fix that up, uh, while you're watching live, the advantage of that is, is we have question, questions and answers. Is so if you're watching live, then you can type in your questions, keep them fish related, and uh, we can answer them as we go along here. So like the last polar chenille that I used prior to me cutting my thread off, I pull it back over and I lock it down. And you'll see if you don't, if you don't pull it back and lock it down, that stuff is really sparse and it'll be this wide around if you can can they see that oh yeah like that round like a football you don't want the football now we're gonna put on our diamond braid I believe no this isn't diamond braid this is actually flat diamond braid in root beer this is what I'm gonna wrap the body with a little bit after I get into the chenille I got I don't know how many that's different types of a rib that's what I'm trying to say So we lay that guy in there, in behind everything. And then, you got that nifty little chunk of whatchamacallit in there, spring. I've got, I forget what this stuff is called. Cactus. Cactus. Chenille. V cactus. And chartreuse as well. I mean, I don't have all the packaging in front of me, like Scotty does. So he doesn't really stumble as much as I do. But I... I don't tie nearly as much as Scott does, as I'm sure if you guys look at our website, you see a lot of him and not so much me. But my flies catch more fish than his do. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, okay, the thing he's like, I don't know about that. All right. So yeah, usually with this cactus chenille, you want to use a hackle plier that I don't have with me because if you're pulling on it, you'll tend to pull all of the uh, chenille out of the strands. So it'll get a little sparse toward the end, but I'll try and be as gentle as I can. You just want to work it up. Work her up nice and pretty. That fills in that body real pretty, pretty like. You just want to work it all the way up there. Keep her going. Going strong right to the finish here. And then we're going to lock her down. And then we're going to follow it up with the root beer. That was a pretty good save on my part. Eh? Did you see that? I cut my thread off. I, I don't want to I don't want to do that twice tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll lock it down. And then we're going to chase with the flat braid to give it a little rib. I'll take this guy. Make sure we don't strap that. We're going back up. Going back up. Man, this fly's coming together quick. Uniform. And then we lock her down. You notice I'm using both my right and left hand. Quite amazing. Lock it down. Now, what do we got here? We've got this nifty stuff from Spirit River called Tip Dyed Bucktails. The one I've got here in my hand, I don't know if you can see it here. Can you read that? White purple. Yeah. I'm not using the white purple. I'm using white. the white blue. Because blue and coho, well, they don't rhyme, but they complement each other quite nicely. So we're going to use... 
I'm not going to go too crazy on it. I'll try and get about, uh, here, I'll just show you how much I'm going to take. The reason for this bucktail, <laughs> too, is it also helps this pattern stand up. Take that, and I'm going to bring it back so that it almost matches the tail of my fly, like so. And I'm going to cut it off and throw the cut ends into the garbage once I clean up my fly tying bench here. Take that guy. I always kind of pinch it on there. This guy sits up there. I usually mess around a little bit to get the cone head up into it. Work your way back. There's the cone head starting to cooperate now. As you can see, it sits up on top as much as it can. Lock it down. Put the UV. Then I take a nice chunk of peacock curl, which I've taken out of the packet because my big clumsy fingers sometimes don't like getting into the little tiny bags that they come into. And I'm going to lay this guy right up on top. And I'm going to keep it about the same length as the bucktail. And if anybody's used peacock curl, they know that fish cannot resist it. And it's good at cleaning up your head of your fly, too. So we're going to take that little chunk. I'm going to hold it over top of here. I'm going to lock it down on top, over top of everything. It's sitting up on top. That one piece here. I know okay. it. Yeah, it's uh, it's sitting a little bit long, but it doesn't really matter. You don't need to make it too too pretty. Those fish don't like pretty flies, do they, Scott? No. They like the big ugly ones. So we lock that peacock curl down, and then we go in front of it. And I'm going to take the tag ends instead of throwing them away. I'm going to clean the fly up with them. So we take this guy. You wrap it around all that goofy thread that I've got there. You don't need to go too crazy with this stuff. It looks like the tie on the suit that just finished the man. I like that. That's uh, that. I'm going to use that. And then what I'm going to do? Whoa! I'm going to cause an earthquake. Hopefully it's not too bad. Oh, we're back. And I'm going to go around that a couple times. One thing I don't have here. Do you have a whip finisher handy? Yep. <laughs> cut this guy nice and short. Do not cut my uh, thread again. I'm gonna go right in tight in on that guy right behind the cone head. <laughs> and I'm gonna take my whip finisher, give it a little bit of length. And I'm gonna lock it down. And I'm just gonna leave just a little hint of that fluorescent orange. And uh, that UV light will pick it up. Yeah, well, that's the next part. Is I'm going to pull up that UV light, and I'm going to show you guys why we use that UV thread and all the UV stuff for the bucktail. Ha ha! A finished product. We give it a little rotate. There's an audience. You hear the audience there? That was amazing. Anyhow, we're going to rotate this sucker just in case my side looks better than. Your side, which it, it does. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> but it actually looks pretty good on both sides. Yeah. I could have used just a little bit more bucktail on that. But we're going to show you. Be ready for it. UV light. Bang. I don't know if you guys can see that. Whole thing glowing. You see the thread up tucked in behind the yeah, cone head right here? There. Pause there. So you can see the orange thread glowing right behind the bead head. Yeah. And then you can see the little hot spot right at the butt end, just before the tail. Can you yeah. see that? Kind of. A little bit? Yeah. You can see it glowing in there, glowing well, orange within all that other UV. Well, just because you can't doesn't mean that fish can't see that. Because when it gets wet, that, that material in the back will kind of... And those little UV bucktail tips, man, smoke. Yeah, they're glowing. They're glowing. That pattern is money. Money, money, money. Anyhow, there you have it. We're going to go up top. If you haven't tried this, well, you, I'm definitely sure that you've never tried this pattern. Are we up top? We're up top. We're getting there. Yeah. We're up top. We're up top. 
if you haven't used this pattern, because I'm sure you haven't, because this is a brand new tie that the fish finder himself has uh, managed to concoct, I highly recommend this fly. We took it out on the Squamish River on, uh, would have been Monday. Today, what is today? The 30th? That would have been the 26th of 26th. October. <laughs> I caught, I'd say, roughly 20 chum with this fly. And I also landed three coho, none of which were hatchery. They were all wild fish. So if you're wanting to catch hatchery fish, not so good for the hatchery fish. But I, someone told me that you have to catch five coho prior to catching one hatchery. So I've got a couple more to go. But anyhow, this pattern is deadly in the Squamish tributaries. So we've uh, we fished it in the Chequamish. We fished it in the uh, Squamish. We haven't tried it in the Mamquam just because there's quite a few people fishing the Mamquam at this time. Yep. And uh, there's a lot of different water to fish. Yeah, we like <laughs> our don't solitude. Have, we don't have to be elbow to elbow to have a good time. So with that note, SSG Bucktail, also known as the Triple Odd Bucktail, tie it. Get your supplies here at Spud Valley Sporting Goods, downtown Pemberton, 1380 Birch Street. I'm Brad Knowles, Pemberton Fish Finder. If you're having troubles catching fish, give us a call. We'll show you how it's done. And I'm out.